Good day. In this video, we're going to prove the theorem that says angles in the same segment are equal. We're also going to do his converse, and we're going to show you corollaries that ride on this theorem's back. Right, the theorem states angles subtended by a chord of a circle on the same side of the chord are equal. In other words, this angle and this angle is sitting on this chord. They are subtended by this chord, and then they will be equal. Same over here. These two angles, D and C, are also subtended by AB. And both the D and C and D and C lies on the same side of this chord. When, he, when we use this theorem in our riders, our abbreviation for our theorem will be angles in the same segment. Now to the proof. If they ask me to prove this theorem, they will either give me this sketch or this sketch and this information written with it. I will only take one at a time. The question reads, you are given a chord or arc AB, so you can call it chord AB or the arc AB, subtended by angles C and D, so D and C is subtended by B, AB at point C and D on the circle. You have to prove that angle C is equal to angle D. In other words, that angles with the red dots that I wrote in there. Whatever comes next is what you should write while proving it. The first thing you'll write is I'm proof. And you say draw radii OA and OB. So you connect, you put the O in the center, you connect OA and OB. Then you write angle A, O1, B is equal to 2 times C. So that angle at the bottom there is twice as big as that angle at C. The reason angle at center is 2 times angle at circle. Then you write but or also, you write angle AO1B is equal to 2D. In other words, that same angle at the bottom there is twice as big as that one there. Again, angle at center is 2 times angle at circumference or circle. Then you'll say 2 times angle C is 2 times angle D, so these two are equal. You don't have to write this reason because they're both equal to the same angle, those two things. And you just write angle C is equal to angle D, you're dividing by 2 on both sides. And that is what we had to prove. And if they give me this sketch to prove that that angle D is equal to that angle C, I'll still write exactly the same words, draw radii OA and OB, OA and OB. Then I'll say AOB is equal to 2 times C, AOB, that angle is twice as big as that angle, and AOB is twice D, AOB is twice D, both of them angles at center is 2 times angle of circumference, then it'll end up exactly the same at the end. Remember, we don't have to write this part. So theorem 4 says angles in the same segment are equal. So those two angles are equal and those two angles are equal. The converse now says the following. If I have a line AB and two equal angles on top of it, they usually say the equal angles are subtended by the same line, then a circle will fit around here. In other words, these four points will be concyclic. It will form a cyclic quad. And the reason you are right when using this in a rider, you will say line subtends equal angles, which is what we said. Or you can just say the converse of angles in the same segment. I'm just reading the theorem in big English words. If a line segment joining two points, in other words this AB, subtends equal angles at two other points at C and D, on the same side of the line segment, then the four points are concyclic. So comparing the two, this one says that if I have a circle, and I have two angles in the same segment, they are equal. This one says, if I have two angles on the same base, then it will lie on a circle. Now lastly, we want to look at the corollaries of theorem 4. In other words, that means it is reasoning you can use on your riders without proving them. The first one says that if we have a circle, and we have two equal chords, then the angles opposite those chords will be equal. Equal chords subtend equal angles. And the reason I will write is equal chords equal angles. Now again, if we have a circle, we have two equal chords on the circle, then the angle at the center from those chords 
will also be equal, and the same wording, equal chords, equal angles. Then the last one, if they give me two circles that are exactly the same size, they call it equal circles. They have the same diameter, the two circles. They don't have to over overlap. And they tell me that in these two equal circles, there are two equal chords with an angle opposite it. In other words, the chords subtend those equal angles. Then the angles will be equal. So if we have exactly equal chords of equal circles subtend equal angles at the circumference. So two equal circles in size with equal chords on them, the angles opposite them will be equal. And then our reasoning is quite logic. Equal circles we have, and there's equal chords we have, then there will be equal angles opposite them. Please indicate whether you liked or disliked this video. You can also subscribe to the channel. If there is something you're not sure about in geometry, you can let us know what troubles you, or send us a photo with a WhatsApp to this number, and we will analyze it, find a solution for you, make a video and post it for free on this channel that other people can benefit from your question.